Mac Voices at CES. Amp Genie brings app and voice control to your legacy stereo hardware. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Collide is a fleet visibility solution for Mac, Windows, and Linux that can help you securely scale your business. Learn more at collide.com slash macvoices. I'm Chuck Joyner. Mac Voices is in Las Vegas for CES. Folks, we stopped by Amp Genie to talk to Brian about how he's adding voice control and other controls to your home audio receiver and your streaming service. Brian, it's good to see you. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Chuck. So this is an interesting little device, and it solves a problem for, I think it's probably a little bit more the home audio enthusiast, the folks that still have receivers. Absolutely. Because so many of us have kind of gotten away from that, and we lose something. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the reasons we created Amp Genie was because good sound matters. And as much as we love products like Sonos that uh, really can fill the rest of our home with music, when it comes to true home theater and when you have the right speakers in the right place and a big subwoofer with your big screen and your left, right, center channel, there's no way to really replace that other than with a real home theater receiver. So we wanted to make sure that everybody could get full advantage of all the modern features like voice control and streaming, but still be able to use our home theater receiver. And because I'm a professional AV integrator and this is what I do for a living, I was constantly faced with this challenge of how can I make my nice home theater system behave like a smart speaker? And it took me a couple of years to figure it out, but I said, hey, if I just listen for the audio and send the right IR commands, I can actually do that. And so that's really what you see here is the Amp Genie, which literally listens for your sound and turns your receiver on and sends five different commands to set it up every time it senses audio. And so I watched the video and I saw some of the demos and you know, it, it sounds like this could be really intimidating and it ends up being just three connections. Yeah, that's correct. You can actually set up your whole Amp Genie in about two minutes. There's, Like you said, there's literally three wires to connect. There's the IR emitter, which actually is included in the box, the USB power supply, which is included in the box, and any one of three different analog, digital, or optical audio sources. So like you said, just three wires. And then as far as programming, it couldn't be simpler because we only have 10 dip switches to configure. Four of them are just to tell it which brand of equipment you have, whether it's an Onkyo or a Denon or Yamaha, etc. And there's eight major brands that we cover. They're there on the sign. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, and then the other six are for turning on the different features, such as auto power on and off, all-channel stereo DSP, and it also different input selections that you can have. So you can have one Amp Genie trigger audio two, another Amp Genie can trigger audio three. So you can actually have your receiver switch back and forth between two different sources automatically just based on sensing audio. So, so talk a little bit about the sensing audio. Um, so I come home and I want to listen to music. What do I do? Sure. Well, if you're like a lot of us and you have uh, Sonos, like let's say throughout your house, so you have some kitchen speakers or tabletop play one or some outdoor speakers that are driven by a Sonos amp, you're already used to just being able to use your voice and say, Alexa or Google or hey Sonos, play whatever. And in those zones, it already is enabled. The problem is, and the reason that Amp Genie exists, is it doesn't work that way when you use it with a home theater. So you could tell your Sonos system, hey, port, start playing music, and it'll start playing music, but guess what? Your receiver doesn't know that, and it's not going to turn on by itself. So that's exactly why Amp Genie exists. Amp Genie will actually hear that your port has been turned on by your voice, and it'll do the other steps that are critical, meaning powering it on, selecting the right input, selecting the right DSP, and setting the volume so that you actually do get music at the sound of your voice using your home theater receiver. So this strikes me as something, you know, I mean, the receivers are always being upgraded, but all, all of us always had a favorite receiver that we didn't want to give, get rid of. And this, this, I'm not sure future proofs it, but it brings it up to date and beyond. Yeah, actually, that is one of our taglines, is that you can easily automate vintage equipment. And we've even tested Amp Genie with some Yamaha and Denon receivers from the 1980s. And as long as it's an IR controlled receiver from one of these eight major brands, you can use an Amp Genie with it, which is really exciting because like you said, a lot of people, even if you have an older receiver that you love, you can actually breathe new life into it and make it controlled by Alexa or controlled by your voice or controlled by Lutron Pico switches. So it really does kind of give you some new capabilities and teaches an old dog new tricks, if you'll forgive the saying. <laughs> yeah, and back then, you know, there were so many IR remotes. Uh, I mean, Bluetooth didn't exist in any wide dispersion yet. So this is this is a great way to add that back to legacy equipment. Yeah, I mean, it literally is a remote control that lives in your closet and it does use IR, but unlike a traditional remote that you gotta find and not lose and know which button to push, it's completely passive. It's literally set it and forget it. 
So uh, what's the availability of this? Is this on the market now? Yes, yeah, so we are currently taking orders both here at CES and on our website, www.amgenie.com. We anticipate our first order is going to be shipping out to customers definitely in the first quarter of this year. They're already on their, our way from our factories in China. We're probably going to have them shipped to customers by mid-February is our goal. Might get pushed into March with all the COVID lockdowns happening, but definitely uh, customers are going to be getting their orders this quarter. And we're doing a quick demonstration of how the actual Amp Genie works in real life. You see that I've got the Sonos app open on my phone. I've got it paused right now. You also notice that the Yamaha receiver is turned off. And you also notice that on our Amp Genie, the red light means that it is ready and it's listening for audio. So what's going to happen is as soon as I hit play, that's going to start the Sonos device from playing. Now without Amp Genie, nothing else would happen. But because we have Amp Genie, Amp Genie is going to sense that the Sonos is producing audio. It's going to send the right IR commands to the receiver, power it on, select the input, select the DSP, turn up the volume, and in about three seconds, we'll actually be able to hear sound. So let's give it a try. Hit play. One 1,000, two 1,000. There it goes. It just powered it on. It selected audio to Sonos, all channel stereo. Now we're just waiting for the Yamaha to finish warming up. And just like that, Audio. So literally, we just powered on our receiver using the Sonos app, something that Sonos users have been dreaming of and wanting for a long time, and Amgenie finally enables that elusive and mystical functionality of literally being able to power it up right from your, the uh, Sonos app. Now, of course, you could also use your voice to control it, so we could do a separate demo where I say Amgenie play, or actually Hey Sonos play, and the exact same thing would happen. But regardless of how you want to start your music, whether it's with an app, with a voice control, or even with something like a Sonos, uh, a Lutron Pico, which already controls Sonos, any of those things will trigger Amp Genie and your receiver will jump to life and bring you audio. And we, we are not talking about just Sonos. You can use Amazon Music, Apple Music. That's a really great question. So yeah, we actually can work with any type of audio. As long as your audio device produces audio either on SPDIF, which is digital audio over a coax connector, analog, which is your traditional left and right, your red and white connectors for analog, or optical SPDIF, um, or toss link rather, any of those three sources can be sensed by uh, Amp Genie. So as long as your player can produce audio, and obviously the Sonos player has several of these, and Sonos supports every major music service, including Apple and Amazon and Spotify and Google Music, all of those can be sent to uh, set your music to any of these types of outputs. So long answer to your short question was yes, absolutely it supports Apple Music and really any type of music platform that's supported by your audio player. And if it happens to be a Sonos player, there's like a hundred different services that are supported. And what kind of pricing do we have? So yeah, the MSRP on the Amgen is $399 US dollars. And if you're a qualified reseller, they could be anywhere from $250 to about $280 depending on the volume that you're buying them. And if you're like an AV guy like myself, you probably buy from companies like ADI or Snap AV. Those are two uh, big nationwide companies, and they're going to be selling them for a slightly higher price, but you won't have to buy as many units, just in the exact same way that Sonos is distributed. They sell to end users, they sell to distributors, and then they also sell to individual installers at all different price points. But the most you'll ever pay is $399, and the least you might get it if you're a high-volume dealer is around $250. Excellent. Brian, thanks so much for the time. Great product. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's been a real pleasure being on your show. We'll see you next time. Okay, take care. Folks, more from CES in Las Vegas. I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com.